everyone, Joe Brady here, and I am excited to share with you some new tools that showed up in Lightroom that, when used in the right way, can be really pretty cool. And that is Generative Erase and the new Lens Blur function. So we're going to take a look and, and see how these work. And I think I found the perfect image for that. Um, this is my new car here. Yeah, right, Brady. Um, this is an over a million dollar McLaren P1. But... It, it really lends itself for the for showing out how these tools work. So I did some basic edits to it already. I just, you can see here, I opened up the shadows and added some saturation, etc. But this is regular basic edits. But let's do some fun stuff. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, hit the erase tool up here in the masking panel. And this is where the new generative AI is. Because if I choose any of the other tools... Uh, the the old content aware race is still here. If I turn that off, it's still content aware race. But if I do generative AI, then all kinds of cool stuff starts to happen. There is an object aware thing. I've played around with that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So let me just show you a more manual way of doing it. So set your brush size. I'm going to go about something like this. And one thing that I thought was a disappointment were the signs because I really wanted to see the cars better. Found out later that when it's not crowded, they say, oh, you can move the sign if you want. But I didn't. So we're going to get rid of it now. So a keyboard shortcut, by the way, when you're using any of the brush tools, and this is considered one of those, is simply click. I'm going to click on the corner, come over to the other corner, hold down the shift key, and it draws a straight line in between the two. So I'll do that for the four corners. And then I will just drag around and fill in the rest. Now, when you're doing a generative uh, erase, you want to make sure you get any shadows as well. So we do have a shadow here. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller. And I'm going to drag around this. Now, if there was something else you wanted to get rid of at the same time, like this thing up here, I have no idea what that is. Oh, actually, I think it's a uh, electric charger. Uh, you can, but again, with as with all of the generative AI tools, right now they're still limited to 1,024 pixels. So I don't want to push my luck. I'm going to do them separately. So I've got this selected, and all I do is click on Apply, and let's see what it does. If you choose a lot, it can take a little bit of time to get it done, but you can see the generating is pretty quick. And how cool is that? Look at that. It did such an amazing job of where the thing was. It filled in the rest of the car pretty well. It even filled in the shadows and the reflections on the top. So I have to say, all right, I'm impressed. So play around with that tool as you see fit uh, and see what it is that's going to work and what's not going to work. So that's the generative erase. So how about the focus tool? Well, let's go down to lens blur. It's underneath here. And what it's going to do is it's going to find the subject for you. Right now, you don't have the ability to do anything about it. So I'm just going to click apply because it's going to look at the subject and it's going to kind of figure out depth of field and blur the stuff behind it. And if you look back here, the cars got blurrier. Well, we can make them more blurry. So let's make them more blurry and we can even boost it and then you have this series of different kind of bouquets that occur that are created so if I click on that one that does bigger circles uh, what is that I like that one that one does the rings doesn't work for here and that one's okay too so it's between that one oops sorry it's between that one and that one actually I like that one better that's even blurrier and you can also, there's a thing called visualized depth. And what that allows you to do is you can see what it is selected as the subject, but you can move around the focus range. So if I want to make the focus narrower, I can do that. And you can see now the stuff in the front, it's saying it's going to get blurry. Or I can decide, well, I want it to go back further, or I want it to come even closer. And even the back of the car would get a little bit blurry. In that case, I'm not going to bother. That's fine. But I just wanted to show you that's what this thing does, this visualized depth tool. So now we've got the car by itself. We got rid of the big sign. We've got the background. What else could we do to this to make it even better for the car to stand out? Yeah, I could go into Photoshop and get rid of that thing. It might be a little too much. We'll try it again after we're almost finished with the generative race to see if we can get rid of this. But before we do that, Let's do some regular tools. Let's select the subject, which is going to be the car. And it does a great job of it. Let's add 
a linear gradient to that. So I hold down the shift key. I want it to go straight up and down. Actually, I don't want it to go straight up and down. I want it to get that area. And then what I want is everything but that. I want the inverse of that. So I click invert mask. And now I can bring down the exposure a bit and the highlights to make the background go darker. And now our supercar looks even better. <laughs> but wait, there's more. I, I, I've got a little extra room over here. Let's go to transform. We're going to do a horizontal transform, which is going to make the car look like it's kind of rotating around to us, which it does. And then with the X offset, we can move it back over into the middle a bit. And then I'll just crop out the rest. Unfortunately, one of the things that Lightroom cannot do yet is it cannot fill in blank areas. If I tried to use any of the generative tools here, it just ignores things that are blank. So if you want that back, you've got to go into Photoshop. Otherwise, bring up the R key, the crop tool, and you have to just crop off the areas like that. So I go to here. I think it needs a little bit more up and down. Let's get a little bit more. All right, that looks pretty cool. All right, let's do one more generative uh, erase. Let's see if we can get rid of this thing. So I'll come back up to here, go to the tool, and I'm gonna choose the object aware and see what it does. So I'm gonna come around this thing and see if it understands what this thing is, because I don't, and then click on apply. And let's see if it's clever enough to get rid of that on a white wall. And it was a complete fail. Huh. I could go over top of it again. Let's see one more time. Again, sometimes it doesn't work. This is early days for this stuff. But you do need to know that sometimes it just doesn't work. Okay, it's getting better. But look, it's still a mess. So honestly, I'm just going to turn it off and leave it back. If I really want to get rid of this thing, I'll just do it in Photoshop. So the last thing I'll do is I do with all my images, or pretty much all my images, is go to effects and put my vignette in. Do something about like that. Now, when you consider, let's go uh, full screen. Here's our final image. When you consider, we started with that. And yeah, the car is cool. The sign's a distraction. The cars in the background are a little bit of a distraction, as cool as they are. But by adding the generative erase to get rid of the sign and the generative focus blur to the background, we were able to turn that into this. And I have to admit, that's pretty darn cool. So that's it for today. As always, we're going to explore more of this as it continues to get better. Uh, right now, it's it's pretty good, but as you could see, when I tried to get rid of this, whatever, like this charger up on the wall, it would have nothing of it, so I'd have to go into Photoshop to fix that, but that's okay. Things are getting better, and they're offering us a lot of capabilities. Okay, I'm back. I know that this was driving some of you nuts, so I have to, I have to take this into Photoshop and just do a little, little bit of tweaks just to finish it off. What are the things that bother me? Well, the little bit of light up top here, uh, these lights here, and the fact that I ended up having to cut off a little bit of this bottom here. So, oh, and of course, our charger on the wall. Let's send this into Photoshop and fix it. Okay, so here's our image in Photoshop. I'm gonna do a Command J. And let's see, the first thing I'm going to do, I want that bottom there. So I'm going to get the crop tool and add a little bit to the bottom just by dragging that, dra dragging, dragging that down. And I'm going to do a generative expand in the crop tool. So let's just go ahead and tell it to do that and to generate so that it can fill in that little bit of light here on the floor that I know the fact that it got cut off is driving some of you nuts. And, oh, aren't you, don't you feel better? And let's see what else it generated. Actually left some schmutz on the floor. Let's see, that one, that one's not going to work. That one versus that one. Oh, it's really just the carpet pattern's a little different. I think I like the, let's see, do I like the first one? All right, we'll go with the third one. Fine, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and select those two layers. Don't need them anymore. Command or Control E to put those back. Now, the other thing I mentioned was up top. Now, what aspect ratio do I want for this? I think I kind of want to keep uh, a standard four by six shape where our, that our cameras capture. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do a four by six, whoop, the wrong way. 
And let's expand that out and see how much of the image that actually gives us. And, you know, actually, if I go with that, I'm going to get add a little bit more because I want I want to make sure I get to keep that stuff on the bottom. Let's just do that much. And what I ended up doing was cropping off the stuff on the top that we didn't like. So let's just go ahead and generate that and see how good a job it does for just a little bit. Now, again, remember the limit is a thousand pixels, but this is not stuff that's either in focus or is any part of the subject. So this is one we might be able to get away with uh, where we're technically going over the pixel dimensions. So let's see one. Let's see. What was one? There's one, two, three. Hmm, they're all good. They're different. Uh, this part over here, I like in three, and I also like what it did over here. So I think three is the winner for this. So we'll hit enter on that. Let me get rid of the rulers. I don't know why I have those up. And yeah, that's good. So I can once again, command E those two together. And oh, we forgot about the charger. Let's see how good a job Photoshop will do getting rid of the charger. So I'm going to do around here and let's try Photoshop's generative fill here and see if it does a better job than we first experienced in Lightroom. Photoshop does give us the three variations where Lightroom's generative race does not. Okay, one, two, look at this third one. <laughs> what the heck is that all about? It's kind of freaky. I have to admit, I kind of like it. Uh, but yeah, and I don't know what the heck that is. I wanted to put a light switch in or something. So what's the answer? Hmm. Uh, I don't like any. I don't like it there either. Do we have to live with this damn thing? Let's try our old friend. Remember the one we always used to use? Let's go to Content Aware uh, Fill. Function Shift F5. Content Aware, and let's see how good a job Content Aware does. And look at that, our old friend did an okay job. It's not perfect, that's okay. But notice with this wall, gee, what would happen if we just blurred this? Let's do a Gaussian blur on that, and look at that, there we go. And we'll deselect it. And there's a little bit of mess still, which we can fix 40% and just paint over the problem that it generated on the side there. And there's some weird shadow up here. And you know what? Sometimes the oldies are the best. So there you go. Content aware fill was the answer there. And we fill that in a little bit. In fact, I'm going to... No, I'm going to leave the damn thing alone. It's fine. Would I like it a little darker? Yeah, maybe. We might do that back in Lightroom. So let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so there it is. We got rid of it, brought it back in, a, in the light, into a Lightroom, rather. And you know what? I think that this all over here, now that I'm looking at it, is maybe a little bit too bright. So let's go into the masking panel, and I'm going to do a linear gradient kind of like this to darken those areas up, but I don't want it to affect our car. So we're going to subtract the subject, which will give us that gradation and leave the car alone. Now I can bring the exposure down a little bit, maybe the highlights. I'm going to do, turn the contrast down, way down, which will flatten it out a little bit as well. And I think just bringing it down a little bit like that is enough to help us out. Okay, I think we're good. I think there's our final. So for those of you who were being driven nuts by that thing on the wall, there we go. It's gone. And I also added back in the little bit that we cut off because uh, the generative uh, fill, oh, actually our horizontal rotation uh, caused a loss of that. So very cool stuff. And it's interesting that what came back to save us was good old content to wear fill. Sometimes it's the answer. So you just have to try the tools and see which one's going to work best for the job. Again, it's going to continue to get better and better. That's it for today. I thank you for joining me, and I'll see you online again soon. Till next time, have a great week. Bye-bye.